Okay, good afternoon everybody. Alex Chisnell here talking about how to amplify your brand with podcasting. So, first of all, can you let me know that you can uh, see and hear me? Um, you should be able to see my slides. Is the main picture that you see there? Um, and then you should see me down the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. So I've just jumped in a couple of minutes early here. I um, can see a couple of people live already, uh, and now everybody's got a notification who registered for this webinar. So just post, and I know there's a little delay. Let me know in the chat box if you can hear me, if the volume is good. Just post up, let me know. Hey, thank you, Suze. Much appreciated. That's great. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. Let me know where you are watching in from today. So I am in Poole in Dorset, which is looking, I can see bits of blue sky up there. Uh, so ever the eternal optimist, hoping that uh, summer is still around for us all. So busy day today. I'm hosting this. Those of you who've been on uh, any of our Festival of Enterprise webinars will know that I've hosted the majority of them since we started. I think it's going to be 100 days tomorrow, which is pretty pretty insane because I think it will be 150 webinars in 100 days. So gone from a live events uh, platform with two big events that were scheduled for this year at Olympia in London and at uh, the NEC in Birmingham. Um, through to an online media channel where we're broadcasting twice a day, Monday to Friday. So uh, it's been pretty exciting, bit of a bit of a pivot, but that seems to be uh, one of the most commonly used words over the last uh, 100 days. Uh, and I've, you know, those of you who've been on here before will, will have heard me interview loads of different entrepreneurs and business leaders who um, have done the same thing, who've pivoted their, pivoted their business. So as I say, let me know where you're watching him from. I'm in Paul in Dorset. Um, the box on the right-hand side, the chat box, um, where it says, say something nice. That's not, that's good, isn't it? I don't think I've ever noticed that before. Pop any questions you've got about podcasting into there for me during the course of the webinar, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, at any stage of the presentation, I'm going to try and keep it engaged, obviously. A busy day, like I say, so I'm hosting this. And then um, at 2 p.m., so I aim to be done by 1. So kind of hold me to that, remind me of that, uh, because I have gone over the last couple of times I've done this. So I'm trying to get better at it. I'm trying to do this regularly so I get more practice. So, yeah, 2 p.m., I'm hosting Piers Linney, who's a friend of mine from, uh, you probably know him best as a former investor on Dragon's Den, secret millionaire on Channel 4. He's also been uh, a banker, a lawyer. Uh, and he's an entrepreneur. So we're talking why diversity is good for business. If you haven't signed up yet, that's going to be a super popular webinar I can see already. Come and join us for that discussion and get to ask um, peers your questions as well. So any questions that you've got with regards to diversity, business, entrepreneurship, etc., then come along and, and ask peers. We hosted a couple with peers right at the beginning of this, nearly 100 days ago now, uh, and it was centered around the, the government support for businesses at the time. So this is a slightly different take, obviously, um, diversity, the Black Lives Matter movement is a very emotive subject. Um, there's been a lot of demonstrations, both in the US, over here, and well, throughout the world since then. So um, we're gonna be covering kind of anything and everything during that, um, Piers' own personal journey, uh, right through to what we think with regards to how diverse um, groups are represented represented uh, in different companies and on different boards, that kind of thing. Um, so a lot to cover, a lot to cover, folks. So if you haven't already, please come and join us. That's at 2 p.m. today. Um, Jill, thank you very much. Um, I joined the cast yesterday, but today I have a message that my browser doesn't support the video format. What are you using such that I can't join? I have no idea. It's exactly the same. It's been the same for the last 100 days. Um, all I would, you know, 99% of the time with these things, it's simply a case of logging out and logging back in again uh, to, to get any glitches that are on that you, your end with regards to 
software. Um, you just need to be on Chrome, we've found. Any other browser, it can get a bit buggy if it's Safari or uh, any of the other ones out there, like Firefox. So that's what I would recommend to do, Jill. I uh, hope you can ping in and join us. Um, and without further ado, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to carry on. So, yeah, anyone joining us, I've, I've created a couple of polls just to let me know uh, who I'm speaking to today. Um, so if you could vote, that would be super helpful. First one is, would you describe yourself as a marketeer, an entrepreneur, or a business owner, or as an employee? If you can uh, let me know. So who am I talking to? Am I talking to an audience of marketeers, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, employees for different businesses? Let me know. And also, more important, is what are you most looking to leverage podcasting for? Are you ultimately looking to sell your products and services? Uh, looking to become an authority in your space, whatever that space might be, whether you want to be the queen of pillows or uh, the king of gardeners, I don't know. Um, whether it's telling your brand story and simply using audio as another method to do that. At the moment, you know, we have three means of, of telling our stories, I suppose. We've got video through vlogs, YouTube. Uh, we've got the written word through blogs, books, um, social media posts, and then we've got audio, you know, podcasts and radio, etc. So, uh, Rich, thank you for joining. Look forward to learning something today. Absolutely. Um, and let me know, post up, do you already have a podcast or do you do you not have a podcast? Uh, I've had a mixed audience, been doing this now about six, seven weeks, I think, and the audience does differ. Some people have a podcast and are looking to grow it, to create a community, um, and the vast majority seem to be people who have heard a lot more about podcasting over the last uh, months, maybe a year, a couple of years, uh, and want to find out more. Is it something they should be doing? So um, I'm Alex Chisnell, and I am going to talk you through this webinar today. So that's me, Podpreneur, Alex Chisnell. So my website, podpreneur.co.uk. Um, it's a term I've coined, I think it best describes my audience who are entrepreneurs who are looking to podcast um, or podcasters with an entrepreneurial slant. Um, and I've got a free Facebook group, which I'll post up details called Podpreneur, uh, where you can come in and learn lots more about podcasting. Uh, and then I've also got a bunch of different ways that you can um, you can work with me and my team if, uh, if, you, if you don't want to do it yourself. So... Who could tell me, first off, I'm going to throw this out there. Who is that? Who can tell me who that is? And you might recognize the branding behind him, which is Spotify, to give you a clue. Um, post up, let me know. Does anybody know the answer to that? I know we've got a little delay on here, so I will wait a couple of seconds just to see if any of you know him. It's been a story. He's been a story, I should say, for, for the last, I don't know, four, five, six weeks. Nobody going to jump in, which is fine. I'm going to tell you then. It's the first time nobody's guessed. Okay, no problem. So his name is Joe Rogan. His podcast show has just signed. He, he just signed an agreement to exclusively host his podcast on Spotify allegedly for $100 million for something like seven years, I believe, um, which is pretty damn impressive in anybody's book. So at the moment with a, with a podcast, for those of you who don't know, is, is you know when you upload the podcast episode um, and you then press a button to upload it and it gets, if you set it up correctly in the back end, it gets distributed to all these different platforms, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, a whole bunch of different ones. So Joe Rogan signed an agreement to have his exclusively on one platform on Spotify for $100 million. Um, and allegedly, again, research says that his show gets about 190 million downloads, which is a lot, clearly. Uh, and what Spotify would like some of that traffic, clearly. Um, so Jackie says, I've wanted to do a podcast for ages to support my dressmaking courses, but was struggling to think of how to work that in. I'm now excited about talking 
about mindset for dressmakers, home sellers, and can't wait to get started. Awesome. I love that. That's a great idea. And 100% podcasting um, can help you. Uh, there's lots of different ways you can monetize a podcast. Most people think of sponsorship. Um, and I do another presentation, I've done it in my Facebook group, um, on how I've got 10, 11, 12 different ways that you can monetize a podcast. And one way is through filling your courses um, through your podcast. That's one way to do it. Um, and it doesn't have to be a hard sell. It can be a really soft sell as well. Um, and mindset, I think you've got the right mindset. You can achieve absolutely any, anything. You need the right mindset first. Mindset comes before anything in my book. Uh, Rich says, I have a podcast already, non-work related. Okay, cool. And my boss wants us to get into podcasting to support our clients. We're a team of careers consultants interested to know how I could get to monetize my non-work football podcast limited audience. Um, well, interestingly, Rich um, had one of my students from my, I've got a podcast course as well. One of my students messaged me the other day saying that he'd been approached. Uh, he's got a football podcast and he'd been approached by a, I can't remember the type of company, but it was a company wanted to sponsor his podcast. And um, he said yes for them to sponsor his podcast. And he was asking me how much he should sponsor it for, um, which is kind of like how long is a piece of string. It's, you know, comes down to what you value your time as, um, what you think you're worth, all of those kind of questions. With regard, anything that you're going to price up, really. Um, but no reason why you couldn't do the same, I'm sure. Um, so, Jill, what's his collateral? Uh, what do you mean exactly when you say what's his collateral? Um, Jill, I mean, he's got 190 million downloads for his podcast, which is a huge, 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 huge audience. Um, and Spotify clearly want people to stay on their platform, to stop going to Apple, for example, to uh, to listen to podcasts over there. They want to keep them on their platform, whether they're listening to music or podcasts, and stop them going elsewhere. So they've been, I'm going to cover that in a minute, but they've been spending a lot of money on acquiring uh, different companies um, to make exclusive content for them and give you a reason to stay on Spotify for longer. So by the end of this webinar, this is what I want you to take away, is uh, is knowing that podcasting is here to stay, that it's, it's not a flash in the pan, that it's never too late to start your own podcast, um, that anybody with zero technical knowledge can start a podcast, that it's not expensive at all, that you can literally start uh, with zero money down to start a podcast. Um, Rish, let, let me know, did you start your podcast with literally for free using just the tools on your laptop or your phone, or have you leveraged, um, have you paid somebody to do it, have you outsourced that yourself? Um, and also the people will want to listen to you. Uh, you know, that imposter syndrome, you need to get over that. Uh, it's a common theme that comes up when I host like, physical workshops that I'm now moving online. Um, it's a common one that comes up that, you know, who's going to want to listen to me? And, you know, when I launched my podcast, which I'll cover now, Two people listen in week one, two people, and it's a few more now. Uh, and again, Rish, how much time do you spend on your podcast? I had somebody on it recently said they spend like two days on their podcast. For me, you're getting started, you only need as a minimum, you can get by on four hours a week recording an interview, uh, listening back and editing it, and then promoting it, uh, repurposing that content an extra couple of hours, so about four hours. So that's what I want to cover today. Any other questions that you've got regards podcasting, pop them up in the box, let me know. Um, Rich has run limited advertising through a network, now looking for sponsorship that needs to be audience appropriate. Uh, just me, some mates in a computer. Yeah, and I've just started doing a second podcast with a bunch of friends as helping them out, and the audience has literally gone berserk in the last month, we're getting 5,000. We only started it five, six weeks ago, and we're getting 5,000 people watch it live through our Facebook group, um, and then more obviously downloading uh, the actual podcast to listen to the audio as well. Uh, so it's amazing what you can achieve in a very short period of time if you put your mind to it. Um, okay, awesome. Thanks for the feedback. Uh, like I say, any other questions around podcasting, simply post them up in the chat box there. That's what I want you to take away from this webinar. If you'd be as good as to, wow, okay. 
looking at the polls. So overwhelmingly, 83% of you on here today uh, want, to be, want to leverage podcasting to become an authority in your space. And again, 83% of you are entrepreneurs or business owners. Super interesting. Andy Rice, thank you for joining us. Um, is it as easy as using Zoom to do a 30-minute podcast? Um, it's not far off, Andy, to be honest with you. I mean, as I mentioned in this, technology has been the great leveler at this time in that everybody is recording uh, their interviews via Zoom. Uh, so I've got an agency called Poppreneur as well where we help different brands um, create. We cre help them create their own podcasts. And we have been giving our clients you know, better quality tech to get a better sound. There's things you can do in Zoom. Um, I could get a bit technical. I, I won't right now, but you, you can change a couple of the settings in Zoom to improve the audio quality. You can, you know, get a mic. So I'm recording today uh, with something called. Um, and again, if you want, I should always put this up. I always forget. If you want my free PDF of uh, equipment suggestions, and I give free suggestions, entry level, and then top of the range, which I literally bought a week before lockdown and I've used once. Um, if you want those suggestions, then literally just email me, alex at screwitjustdoit.org. I'll put all my contact details up um, at the end. But um, just grabbing my lead. Um, but that's all I'm using is this looks like a Death Star. It's, uh, it's called a snowball, and there's a couple of different ones. This is just like an entry level um, mic you can use um, for your podcast and, you know, set of headphones. Again, headphones, you, you can literally, to start with, get away with the headphones that come with your mobile phone just to get started. Obviously, if you want to improve the audio, uh, then you probably want to have a look at my PDF um, to get some, some ideas. But to start with, like I say, all I want to do is get people started. Um, and you can see I was watching the rugby show on, on uh, BT Sport, and you can, you can literally see they've got four people in the four corners of the screen and the, and the presenters in their kitchen doing it. And uh, the three former rugby players have all got different tech. You know, one's got a set of ear AirPods in, another one's got, you know, earphones in, another's got a big set of headphones. And they're all just using their laptops on Zoom to do it. Um, so it is a great leveller at, at the moment. Uh, it is a great leveller. So, um, so, yeah, I'll cover... I'll, Cover that, and again, if you if if you want a PDF, let me know. Email me, um, and I'll let you know. You can literally spend you know hundred pounds to get an entry level mic. Um, really good question, Jill. That's not a dunce question at all. Every question is a good question, and that's a really good question. So headphones is literally um, is not as important as the mic, but what what is important about having a set of headphones to plug in is that it takes away any other sound around the mic that's in your computer. That's the main thing that it does because this will pick up all sorts of rubbish, you know, whether you're just putting a glass of water down, it's gonna, if you haven't got your headphones plugged in, your com computer's mic's gonna pick up all these little sounds that you're tapping on the keyboard. So it literally removes all of that and you literally just need something to plug into the jack to eliminate the mic on your on your laptop. So Jackie says, I'd like to use the interview format and have lined up some people for the first episodes. Would appreciate any tips on what to do to include on a template to prepare them for the interview and also follow up template for helping them to share it through their channels. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've just launched, um, just launching a new mentoring uh, group, my inner circle. Um, and that's something, because again, it's a common one, people asking for like roadmaps, templates, cheat sheets. So we're putting all that together um, and again, I've done lives in my Facebook group, Podpreneur, which is a free group. Uh, I'm going to be starting up again next week with some more free trainings in there. And we'll be covering things like that. Um, but the mentorship literally has got you know, every single um, template that you, you would ever need. Um, OK, so let's move on, guys and girls. So, so that's me. That's my podcast. Screw it. Just do it next week. I am going to be releasing episode 250, which I'm pretty proud about. Um, I literally, I knew it was coming up, but all of a sudden, boom, it was there, 250, uh, which is pretty insane. So just over three years uh, next week, 
And last week was the anniversary of the first number one ranked podcast that I got, which was interviewing um, the founder of Huel, H-U-E-L, um, Julian Hearn. As a first, we got a number one um, entrepreneurship podcast for the UK. Um, so as I say, took my podcast to number one, and it's been a consistently number consistent show in the Apple chart since then. I've also taken the clients that we work with um, and students who come through the course as well, who, again, you know, if you follow the instructions on the tin, um, it is achievable for everybody. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to give you a couple of examples during this, people who've done that with no email list, no big social following, and they've managed to get their podcasts uh, in the top charts. And what's that useful for? So it means more visibility. If your podcast is in the chart, more people can see it, more people can then subscribe and download it. And that's how you build. One of the ways that you can build a following, a community, your tribe, your kind of people um, through your own podcast. Obviously, to start with, you're just going to be sending it out to your existing um, family, friends, connections, acquaintances, etc. But you know, you want to build an audience, and you want to, you know, get more of your ideal audience. And the way to do that is is to get it some visibility. Um, so for me, it's all about pre-launch um, and launch strategy. That's what I really focus in on when um, I'm teaching my students, uh, whether I'm working with different brands. That's what I focus in on because. If you don't, then you can do it the hard way like I did it. And you can take uh, two years to get to the top of the charts. Um, you know, but knowing what I now know, I could um, I could do it a little bit earlier. Peter Henry, thank you for joining us. Peter, thanks again. Hope you're joining us for Piers Linney at two o'clock. I reckon you might be. Um, OK, so keep the questions coming. Thank you, Andy. Um, I will cover that for you 100 percent. So moving on. Yeah. So look, like I said earlier, guys, I launched my podcast. Um, literally two people listened to it in week one. Two people, clearly my wife and my mother, probably. Um, and since then, uh, last uh, sorry, last week uh, was the anniversary of our first ever number one in the UK. And since then, um, I should have dreamt a bit bigger, really, because it started a bit of a tidal wave and we ended up with number ones multiple number ones in the UK. The next week, we had another number one when I interviewed James Haskell, former England rugby player, and uh, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, person. Um, and since then, like I say, we've gone on and had number ones all over the world from the UK to Uganda and, and every country in between. And did I, did I target Uganda for a number one? No, I didn't. But that's one of the, um, you know, the idiosyncrasies and the beauty of, of, of podcasting. And, and now, you know, my show, Screw It, Just Do It, is listened to in 140 Plus, countries worldwide, I think it was 144 when I last checked a couple of weeks ago. Um, and just to give you uh, screenshots, when I had a last look at the show, um, mine's there at number 15 for that week. And in sandwich between 13 is Gary Vaynerchuk and 17 is Tim Ferriss, two people who I've always held in high regard and listened to their podcast and inspired me. Two of the inspirations for me starting my own podcast. Um, so, you know, if someone had said to me three years ago that, that my podcast would be, and this is in Egypt, by the way, another random country for you. You know, if, if somebody told me that I'd, I'd get a top 20 podcast with these guys in a, in a foreign country in Africa three years ago, then I would have laughed them out of the room. But anything is, is possible when it comes to podcasting, uh, especially, you know, building a community of people, finding a new audience for your podcast, becoming a thought leader, um, an authority in your space. Um, and that's how I, I came collaborating with these guys for the Festival of Enterprise. I created a podcast for them uh, since, I can say, coming up to 150 live webinars in 100 days, the likes of Lord Billamoria, Cobra Beer founder, uh, Camilla Ainsworth, youngest finalist in The Apprentice, and a whole bunch of other people. Uh, so I've created podcasts for a whole variety of people just to give you an idea. So that was my first Lord that I met, Lord Young, um, and that's ex-forces, and they help ex-military or military personnel transition from the military to civilian life. And we created a podcast, Shining a Light on 
those inspiring stories of military personnel who had started up uh, businesses after leaving the military, right through to uh, an American company called NPE uh, that's in the health and fitness space. And then I've also consulted for brands like Grenades, who launched a podcast um, and couldn't work out why they couldn't get it into the into the top 200. Um, and we managed to get that into top 10 for them within seven days of working with Al Barrett and the team. So why now? Why now? Why would you want to launch a podcast now is, is the question. Um, thank you for the for the for the questions that keep coming i'm going to answer them so why should you start a podcast now so um i'm not a complete well this is another ex example to show you i am not a techie so if anyone could do it uh you can uh and I've, I've just posted up you might not be able to see this 100 clearly um but i've posted up some of the examples on the right hand side so this was before and after COVID-19, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, how global podcasting listenership has changed and why probably more people have got to hear about podcasting. So UK is up 20%, Italy 22, France 31. Globally, across the board, 10% um, more people are listening to podcasts now than they were a couple of months ago before the pandemic arrived. And the subjects covered, probably no surprises there, in all honesty. Science and medicine, well, we've all been trying to find out more about um, COVID-19, the pandemic, society and culture. That's, you know, had a massive shift. Kids and families, we've all been living at home together and trying to entertain each other. Hence, entertainment, TV and film and, and comedy. Well, we've all needed a laugh, haven't we, over the, over the last uh, 100 days or so. So why now? So I, as I alluded to earlier with Joe Rogan, so Spotify last year spent half uh, a billion, 500 million or more pounds on acquiring podcast companies. So they could see that people were listening to music on their platform on Spotify, but when they wanted to listen to podcasts, they were going over to Apple to listen to podcasts. So to keep them on their platform, they started, they did a beta test and they had, I don't know what the exact figure was, it was something like 1% of the world's podcast, you were invited to be on that platform. So I was invited to be on Spotify's platform. Now it's open to everybody. They clearly did their test, found out they liked what they saw or heard and went out and bought a load of private uh, companies that created content just for them. And now uh, they even got their own platform which same like a website really that hosts your podcast. So it lives there. You own it though. It lives there. And when you upload each podcast and press upload, you'll then distribute it to all the different platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, etc. So, you know, why now? Well, clearly there's a bit of a tech war going on um, between these companies. I, don't, I honestly don't think there's a better time to start a podcast personally. Um, new cars and new technology, new cars are being built with the technology that you can listen to podcasts, the easy as pressing that purple button there, podcasts. And I know the automotive industry has taken a massive hit, but I'm sure there will be some kind of government package to get people making cars again, people buying cars again. And, you know, once we all, maybe you started commuting already, you know, vast, a, a, you know, big number, percentage of podcasts I listen to when people commute. Um, and that's only going to go up when you're in a car on a journey, when there's an easy button like that to listen to podcasts. Uh, and then last summer, Apple Podcasts, a year ago, so when you, 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 you launch a podcast, you get to choose three categories that you'd like to be found in. There's a big waiting on the, on the number one category. Um, and Apple, whether they saw what Spotify was doing as well, I'm sure they did. But they opened up those categories and made more categories for people to be found in. So, again, it just makes the opportunity bigger for you to be found. So before, say, there was management and marketing was a category. Now there's management and there's marketing. And there's also business news, entrepreneurship, uh, social businesses. And all of these 
fit under like business, which is the main category. And then you've got all of these subcategories, like I say, business use, social businesses, entrepreneurship, a uh, whole bunch of different ones. Um, and then Google Podcast won a piece of the action as well. So they started indexing podcasts. So before, you know, you'd, you'd, you'd search for website, you'd search online for something and a website would come up. Then they started indexing video, videos started to be found. And now, last year, um, audio is being found. So if you Google, for example, Piers Linney, who I'm chatting to uh, in, in 90 minutes on here, um, my podcast with Piers Linney would come up. So I've interviewed Piers a couple of times before. We've done a couple of events together. Those would come up, uh, which clearly is, is great from a podcaster's point of view. So um, any questions, like I say, post them up or in, in, in regards to what I've just talked about. Um, how do you measure success from a financial perspective? I suppose that Peter asks, uh, for me, I guess that's individual. Um, you know, you set yourself a target. Uh, do you want to make money from your podcast? Do you just want it to be a, a brand awareness piece? Uh, is it just a hobby, for example? For most people, I, I don't see why you wouldn't want the biggest possible audience or the most engaged audience for your particular niche. Um, uh, yeah, for, for me, why would you want to reach? Wouldn't, why wouldn't you want your message to reach more countries um, to, to speak to more people, etc.? There is so much competition out there. I'm a Nottingham Forest supporter. Unlucky, Rich, I feel for you. I'm a Cardiff City supporter myself, so we're up there together. And there are about five other podcasts out there. Some of them obviously have more time and budget for marketing than I do. Absolutely. But you know what? I posted up this week on my um, social media uh, that I, I set out my number one goal a year ago in January 2019 to get a number one podcast. And... I, I got to number two about four or five times and I literally came to the conclusion I would never get a number one. So I couldn't shift the Guardian newspaper from above me. And this was under the technology category. And I just thought, how the hell can I compete with somebody like a like a Guardian, for example, or a Tim Ferriss or a Gary V or a, uh, a Joe Rogan? But you can. That's a beauty podcast. If you get things right with regards to your, your pre-launch and your launch strategy, and you build an engaged following, you, you get buy-in from the people that you are interviewing uh, to share with their followers, their community, that's when you start to build. And that's how I've done it, that's how I've done it with mine. You know, it is possible to do that. There's competition out there, but look, I think a billion plus active users on YouTube is far more competitive than the podcasting space. I think that, and that's, you know, the uh, the visual side of things that we've got as an option when it comes to creating content, video. Um, I also think, also think it's far more competitive in the blogging space with 20 million active blogs. Who could tell me how many podcasts are out there? How many podcasts do you think there are right now? Who can give me an answer? Take a guess. Take a wild stab in the dark and punch it in there. Um, interested just to know, and I know you can all Google this now, and you might not get the right answer, though. I've got the right answer. So just interested to know. Post it in the chat box. I know there's going to be a little bit of a delay. I'm going to take a little glass of water. Do you think it's competitive out there, Rich? How many do you think there are out there? Peter, I'm sure you'll have a go at this. Andy? Let me know what you're thinking. Is it so important to have? Uh, <laughs> because Apple told me. Um, because Apple uh, published how many podcasts have been registered. Uh, Two million. Not bad answer. Not bad answer. Wendy Effect. Complete novice to this sort of podcast. Do you need to own? Do you need your own YouTube channel? No, but I, I recommend having a YouTube channel as well. I would say in millions. Yep. Kind of, Andy. Thank you for posting up, everybody. Um, okay, so I'll share it with you. So a million, one million podcasts was registered on, on April the 20th, 2020, this year. Um, Apple posted up that the one millionth podcast had been registered 
um, on their platform. And that's not even active. I don't know the answer for active. I read something literally in the last couple of days that said there was something like 70% of podcasts out there aren't even active, i.e. somebody started it, I don't know, 2004 when podcasting started and it's not active anymore. So um, so pre-COVID, I'll, 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 I'll give you that information as well. Uh, let me switch back to my slides. Um, yeah, and I cover that is a good question, but I cover that. I cover that. So, uh, so there was a twenty four percent increase in two thousand eighteen to two thousand nineteen, and then there was a fifty percent increase from January two thousand nineteen to April two thousand and twenty. So, um, in January two thousand and nineteen, when I said that I was going to get a number one podcast, there was five hundred thousand podcasts. In January 2020, so six months ago now, there was 850,000 podcasts, and then another 150,000 were registered between January and April the 20th, 2020. So that's how quickly things have been moving. Um, and clearly, there is a window of opportunity out there. Um, I spoke to someone recently, and they were comparing it to when blogs first appeared, and they think it's a 10 year journey again that we've got 10 years and they thought we were in around year four which is interesting because I've, I've thought about it in similar terms that it's going to be like blogging but i thought we're maybe a few years further on down the line so who, who knows and I, that will all depend i guess on technology who brings out the next platform the next content creation um but you know for me there are um, there is a window of opportunity here, and I don't think there's a better time. Like anything in life, yes, there's competition out there, um, but the cream will always rise to the top. If you're creating a podcast or a vlog or a blog, you want it to stand out uh, from the crowds. You want to give people a reason to invest time in listening to your podcast. You know, the average person listens to something like six or seven podcasts a week. So, you, you know, you want yours to be one of those in, in your niche, clearly. Um, good question, Randy. How many are video-based like Joe Rogan now? I don't know the exact figure. Um, and, and Joe's, I wouldn't say video-based. I know, I know what you mean, i.e. they film it. Um, and, and, you know, everybody that I work with now, whether it's as, as an agency or my students, I tell everybody it makes sense to... The video just because you are creating more content and you can repurpose that content on social media clearly we all um consume content in different ways some people prefer the written word some people uh prefer audio some people prefer video so you might as well cover all bases um as far as i'm concerned and you might as well record so for, so for me now, and you'll still get people, like somebody cancelled today, one of the founders of Boohoo, the fashion chain, I was uh, going to be interviewing them, and they cancelled, but they only wanted an audio podcast. And then my 250th podcast next week with Oliver Cookson, who's the founder of My MyProtein, um, now living in Monaco, 300 million pound fortune, as you do, Sunday Times Rich List. Um, so I wanted a pretty good guest to launch to episode 250. He only wanted to do audio as well, which is cool. I'm happy to do that. Um, but yeah, for me, it's a no brainer really, uh, that you might as well record them for video and house them on, on YouTube. And then you can chop up that content and use them as video clips as well as audio clips, etc., etc. So, um, Andy, good question, Rich, which is what I was getting to. Do you get more engagement from the video content? And do you know what, Andy? So every, every question like that, um, I always refer every question back to who is your ideal listening avatar? So who's your ideal listener when it comes to your podcast? So a couple of exercises that I do um, with whoever I work with, um, you know, whether it's in, in my Facebook group for free, whether it's my students or my course, whether it's with the, the agency. And it's literally two things. is working out exactly what you want a podcast about and exactly who you want to listen to your podcast. So every question I refer back. So will you get more engagement from your video content? I would say, um, how does your ideal listener to your podcast consume their content? 
Um, you know, are they male or they female? How old are they? Um, do they have kids? What are they doing when they listen to your podcast? And that shaped how I how, how my podcast has changed over the years because I found out that my audience uh, were predominantly entrepreneurs, which I kind of knew, but they were commuting to work and they wanted a shorter episode to listen to because uh, I was doing two interviews in one episode to start with, people at different stages in their entrepreneurship journey. Now I've chopped that up and I do two episodes a week that are shorter episodes. So the beauty of podcasts for me is that you don't need to have a screen. You can multitask. For example, my wife listens to podcasts while she is uh, doing the garden, while she's gardening, which is one of her passions, but when she's doing the housework. For me, I listen to podcasts when I go for a run because I'm passionate about running, or it's when I go for a walk, which I kind of split up with my, with my running, uh, when I commute, all these kind of things. So for me, it comes back to how does your audience um listen to your podcast okay um that's what it's going to come down to okay so moving on eight and a half million people listen to podcast each week now and that's since covid19 equal to one in eight of the total population 75 i thought this was an interesting stat to throw in because a lot of people that i speak to want to uh monetize their podcasts they wanted to pay the way and the most popular or the first thing most people think of is sponsorship and the fact that 75 percent of advertisers surveyed plan to increase their podcast ad spend shows me that it was a positive experience for them that they had you know good engagement from uh the podcast that they sponsored um that's 75% of advertisers. So it's pretty powerful, I think. And this is a quote I like. So a podcast is a brand's ownable, scalable, intimate stage outside of the Facebook powerhouse. With podcasting, the audience doesn't exist in one place, in the hands of just one private company. The podcast can live across multiple, multiple platforms at the same time. So for me, I've seen so many people brands build their audiences on private platforms like instagram like facebook linkedin and all it takes is for one of those privately owned companies to change the algorithm and they're all owned by individuals who've got their own agendas clearly the mark zuckerbergs of this world it just takes somebody to change that algorithm or to lock you out of your own uh social media platforms which i have seen happen in my own space, in the podcasting space as well. Um, and if you built your audience inside there, you're kind of screwed. Where do you go? If your audience lives, if you haven't built an audience separately, like via an email list or Facebook Messenger, for example, um, then you're kind of screwed. Whereas with podcasting, you own your content. You record these interviews, they live on wherever you, you have them, you know, on your computer, um, in your Dropbox, in your G Drive. You then just upload them to the platform that houses your podcast and then you press distribute and if you've set it all up correctly then it automatically goes to uh, spotify apple google etc etc it's just it lives across multiple platforms at the same time and that's again one of the beauties of it for me so i'm going to give you a couple of examples from different ages as well. Didn't happen with Betamax. Ha ah, No, it certainly didn't. Um, and who knows, you know, the chat in my industry in podcasting is that, uh, and I've seen a couple of people approach me who are doing different um, kind of testing platforms with podcasting that they're looking to create, you know, is podcasting going to become the next social media platform is the chat, basically. I hope not, because who needs another bloody social media platform in the world? It's hard enough with half a dozen out there as it is at the moment to keep up with them. But I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to get more engagement between the listener and the actual host, the content creator, the podcaster. Um, yeah, just an hour today, Jill. Um, if I need to re rearrange a call. Uh, well, drop, drop me a message. LinkedIn's the easiest place to get hold of me if you're thinking of um, – Creating a podcast for your brand, let me know. I've also, like I say, got a free Facebook group um, where I do free live trainings every week where people can ask me questions. 
Um, so I'm going to give you a couple of examples just to show you different age spectrums as well. So Jonathan Bowman Perks, MBE, um, is in his mid to late 50s. I think he's 56, 57 now. Um, and he launched his podcast, Inspiring Leadership Podcast, and he didn't have an email list. He didn't have an Instagram profile, didn't have a Facebook profile. He had some people on LinkedIn, um, but not a huge audience by any stretch of the imagination. He's ex-military uh, himself. He now uh, has a coaching business. And with his podcast, he can interview people on his podcast who he would like to work with. And for me, this is the, this is the secret to monetizing your podcast is that he can have people on as guests who he'd like to become a, become clients that he works with, and it's a really soft sell. Um, can I interview you for my podcast? You establish a relationship with somebody. Uh, you give them your platform to share their message with the world, and at the same time, they find out they find out about who you are and what you offer. And if that guest you know, engages with you, likes what you do. You find out by interviewing them, you know, where their pain points are, what their frustrations are, what they're struggling with, and provide them with a solution to that. And for me, that's, you know, e far easier than sponsorship, far easier than trying to get sponsorship is by using a podcast in that way. So uh, just to show you again, if you look right in the middle there, there's Jonathan, number nine. So top 10 podcasts within a month of launching it. Jonathan is one of my students um, that came through my podcast launch program. And he's gone on to have top 20 podcasts all over the place, France, Italy, Germany, South Africa, Switzerland, Australia, you name it. He's done incredibly well. If you, if you follow him on LinkedIn, he gets really high engagement on his posts there as well. He scaled his up to, like myself, to a twice a week show as well. And how many of you would want to, you know, genuine question, how many of you would want to get your podcast when you launch it in the top 20 in a particular country? Uh, you know, are you looking for that kind of visibility when you launch? Are you not bothered about how many people see your podcast? Um, you just want to launch a podcast. It's as simple as that. So let me know. Just interested to know again, Are you? would you like to have a podcast that gains some kind of visibility um, as well? So sorry if I missed this. What is the best way to get my podcast onto multiple listening platforms? At the moment, our podcast goes straight to Apple and Spotify, but I know that people using Android can get it via their apps. It would be great to be number one in Nottingham. Indeed. Um, yeah, it's literally whatever hosting platform you're, you're using, Rish, you would, um, you would be able to set those up so you can literally – uh, your, your platform that you're using should have all the options available there. So there's like SoundCloud, there's Stitcher, uh, there's Google Podcasts. There's a whole bunch of different ones. And you just, and it's really simple. You just need to set up. You literally just go to stitcher.com, soundcloud.com, and literally uh, set up an account with them. And you can link it up in the back end of the hosting platform that you're using on your podcast. Really uh, easy to do so that every time you then upload a new episode, boom, it automatically syncs and goes to, as well as just Apple and Spotify, it goes to all the others. And at the end of the day, if there are multiple platforms out there that people listen to on podcast, you want to be able to reach everybody all of the time. So why not have every account linked up? It makes, you know, it's a no brainer uh, for me to do that. Peter, looking for very niche quality, not quantity. Um, yeah, I get that. But at the same time, for me, when you launch, um, you can do that, Peter. You know, you choose your subcategory. Instead of choosing a big category like business, for example, you choose a subcategory like, I don't know, business news or social businesses, for example. Um, and you have a you know fully optimized launch strategy so that you get visibility within that niche. Um and you don't need to be, you don't need a big following to be able to get visibility by getting landing 
into a chart. A friend of mine uh, helped with his podcast. He launched straight into number four into uh, the golf. He's a golf podcast. Clearly, that's not a massively competitive space. I don't think having researched it with him uh, to be able to launch. And, you know, golf, that's pretty, pretty niche UK golf audience. I don't think um, who listen to podcasts, you know, all depends, all depends. Um, but for me, you know, why wouldn't you want to land with a splash um, and get more people looking at your artwork on your podcast and then listening to your show? So um, you are your own media, guys. So for me, all you need equipment wise is one of these is a smartphone where you can literally record an interview, you can edit the interview, upload it to your hosting platform, and then share that episode on social media. You might have videoed yourself with your phone as well. You could have created artwork with your phone as well. You are your, your own walking, talking media channel these days, and that's literally all you need. Um, for me, I prefer using a laptop. I use my phone to share stuff, um, but primarily, and I think it's maybe, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, an, uh, what's the phrase I'm looking for? An age-related thing. I'm, I, I prefer to see a big screen when I'm, when I'm working on my podcast rather than trying to do it all on a small phone. But I know a lot of the the guys and girls who have helped in, in the Facebook group and students come to literally just do it all on their phone. Simple as that. They're happy using it. They're brought up just using their phones. Uh, and I get it. You can literally do it on the move as well, then, can't you? So that's all you need. And, it, it, you know, there are apps out there. I've got it on my PDF sheet that, that I give out uh, that you can literally use for free. So you can literally just use free apps so just use your phone that you've already bought and free apps that you can download on your phone you don't honestly if you want to do it as simple as that or if you want to if you are a brand or you, or you are a, uh, the marketing director of a brand and you want to have you know really good audio quality uh with you know top end guests you know i've been working with a couple of clients who are uh eight nine figure businesses and their guest lists who they want to have on their show are, you know, pretty damn A-list and they want everything right. They want to record it in the studio. They don't want to do it at the moment via Zoom, which I get again. Although for me, I think, like I say, technology is a great leveler. So why not start now? Um, screw it, just do it. That's what I always say. Uh, name my podcast. <laughs> so um, moving on, who wants to expose their brand to a new audience through their podcast. Do any of you want to attract a new audience for your brand? And that can be uh, your business brand or your personal brand. Is that something that interests you, for example? Let me know. Post up in the comments box. Let me have a quick look at the poll. Uh, it's still the highest, becoming an authority in my space. And entrepreneurs, business owners, still the highest as well. Just having a look for those of you who are coming in late. Uh, I've got two polls running there. Click the poll button. Let me know. Not everybody has uh, voted. Let me know what you're most looking to leverage podcasting for. And would you describe yourself as a marketeer, an entrepreneur, an employee, etc.? cetera? Um, Rich says it would be good to be the go-to place for content among Nottingham Forest fans. Absolutely. Uh, that's a great that's a great thing to do and a friend of mine um, a friend of mine is my um, my nephew so he started a podcast with Bristol Rovers we're all in the same division Rish um, and he's only it was Charlie 14 14 um, and he started uh, started one in there and there's no you know why not be the go-to authority uh, fans are across the world football teams clearly so it wouldn't just be in Nottingham, but it would be, you know, throughout the world. Um, so Diana, that's a good question. How much post-production edit goes into it? More difficult if you're also doing video. So this is my, thank you, Diana, for that question. Um, so my answer, and, and again, I say this 
to everybody, whether I'm broadcasting in my Facebook group or to my students on uh, on webinars, um, is that outsource it. Do what you love to do. What is the reason that you want to do a podcast? Is it because you like speaking to people? Is it because you want to use it to connect with people that you that inspire you, that you look up to? Um, or if you've done it because you love editing, I think it's not by the question that you, you posted up there. But for me, I have no interest in whatsoever in post-production. So I outsource mine from, from day one. And my producer is still my producer. He's now part of my team. Before, it was just somebody that I outsourced it to. He's now part of my team. And who he, he does it all for all of the clients that we work with. Clearly, like the bigger brands that we work with um, want it all done for them. They don't want to do it themselves. Uh, for me, I have no interest, but you can do it yourself. Um, and I would say, so for me, when I say like four hours minimum to podcast, and that would be an hour to uh, interview, so an hour to research your guest that you're going to have on your podcast, an hour to interview that guest, uh, an hour to listen back to that podcast and edit it. Um, and then an hour to promote it, you know, set up one post on social media. And clearly, you then could ask for some more time. You want to promote, you want to promote it every single day. And for me, it takes me, I've got my team doing it now, but when I was doing it, I worked out, it took me about 45 minutes to, to, to write a social post with all the links and put it on every single platform. That's what I got it down to. I couldn't get it down any quicker. It's 45 minutes. Um, and yeah, video again, it's the same thing, just, just outsource it. But look, I had somebody do a live in my Facebook group and he literally did a tutorial showing how simple it was. It was literally a case of getting his phone, opening the app and literally just pinching two dots. And that was to edit. You start and literally super simple how to edit if you want to do it yourself. For me, it's all about you know doing more of what you love. Um, so if you want to do it, go for it. And if you want to keep costs down, clearly that's the way you want to start it as well. Wendy affects us. Wendy, I want to influence the way people think about small business ownership, be more expansive and positive in their thinking. 100% agree with you. That would be a great reason um, to start a podcast. Definitely. Anything positive. Okay, so trying to bring things to a wrap for those who got to go. Um, just another example, and then I'm going to wrap things up for you. So Entrepreneurs Can Party with Scott Stockdale. So S Scott in his early 20s, again, no email list, uh, no Facebook profile, Instagram, about 700 people, LinkedIn, under 500 people, um, full-time job, six days after launching, this happened. Number 10, Entrepreneurs Can Party. Scott Stockdale. So again, Scott's come through my podcast launch program course, but literally followed all the instructions on the tin to the letter, did exactly what I told him to do. Uh, and now I'm learning from him, which is great. He's outsourced his um, editing, his video, his social media, everything um, to do what he loves to do, which is exactly the same as me, which is meeting the guests. So do you want to attract new listeners? Gen Z, if you do, is the most popular listening demographic. Nearly 50% of generate Gen Z. So say, I don't know, 18 to, what, 29-year-olds maybe, listen to podcasts. Okay, so a lot of the brands that I, I, I ended up speaking to, I'll ask them, you know, how they're trying to attract their current audience. And, you know, an answer I got from one of the military organizations was that, uh, you know, TV, radio ads, and broadsheet newspapers. Well, Generation Z doesn't watch... TV, they watch YouTube or Netflix and they don't read newspapers, they read social media. So they weren't advertising in the right space. Whereas podcasts, they'd be engaging with their audience. And it gives you the ability to amplify your story. Um, you get to educate your audience about your products and services through having your podcast. It's just storytelling, you know, through the audio format by having a podcast. Um, you know, when you launch a podcast and no matter how, um, you know, small it is, Peter, for example, or how big it is, some of these brands have got massive audiences already. 
But if you launch it to those people, you're educating them about the products and services that you already have, uh, into weaving that into your storytelling, trying to attract more of those ideal customers that you already have, and turn those new listeners into paying customers. That's surely got to be the ultimate aim for, for anybody who's looking to make money from podcasting. If you are a brand, if you have some, you obviously need goods and services to sell. Um, and a lot of people are concerned when starting a podcast that they've got to create new content. Well, I can tell you that, you know, if you've got an existing blog or a vlog, you can turn that, you just repurpose that into your your podcast and as i said at the beginning you've got three choices you've got the written word with regards to like a blog uh, or a book for example magazine you've got a video set so a vlog or a youtube channel or you've got audio podcast radio etc so you go pick one of those as your pillar content um, and then you turn that pillar content into micro content um, and share that across different social media platforms so your, your pillar content is your macro content. Share that to, and micro content could be an audio snippet, a video snippet, like a little quote. It could be an image with a quote written underneath it. Um, all sorts of different things you can obviously do on social media um, to do that. And don't suffer, as I mentioned before, from imposter syndrome, okay? Um, people will want to hear your message. Uh, look, I started off in week one with two people listening to my podcast. It's now in 143 countries. I am not a techie. If I can do it, anyone can do it. I did not have uh, a huge audience before I started this, and I did it the hard way. Um, I will answer your question, Diana. I'll just finish up the presentation, and I'll answer any other questions I haven't answered. I'm coming. It's one o'clock now, so appreciate some of you might have to go. I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer just to wrap up. I'll be five minutes just to wrap up, answer any questions that you got. I'm happy to stay on and answer those questions. Um, and those watching on a replay or want to watch the replay, uh, this will be available for replay as soon as I stop. So... Look, my message is be heard. Make podcasting part of your marketing strategy. What next? Start. Hardest thing for anybody with anything new is knowing where to start. For me, it's just do something today, tomorrow, the next day. One thing, you know, whether that's listening to a podcast, whether that's sending an email, making a phone call, whatever it might be, do something um, that's going to move you forward in starting a podcast. Okay, that could be sending me an email and asking for my equipment um, recommendations. That could be joining my free Podpreneur Facebook group where you'll get to one, meet like minded people who are on the same journey. And I did a survey in there recently, and yes, the majority are procrastinating. He still haven't taken those steps necessary. But we've had over 20 people start this group during lockdown, just wanted to do something for free. Um, had over 20, 25, I think it is now, but another couple this week, launch podcasts uh, from scratch. Absolutely nothing to launch a brand new podcast uh, in that group, which is incredibly inspiring. Um, so literally just look for Podpreneur, take a screenshot of that to remind you what it looks like. There's a couple of questions to answer, and it's literally as simple as do you have a podcast or not? What are you looking to, um, to gain from podcasting? And I'll let you into the group, and we're going to be starting some more live trainings next week. Um, if you wanted to do what um, Jonathan Bowman Perks, Scott Stockdale, and other students of mine have done, um, then simply... Uh, Go to my website, podpreneur.co.uk. Information and all bunch of different ways that you can work with me. My course is the, is like the easiest way people can work with me. Um, it's just £199 and it's like nine hours worth of content there. And I'll take you literally from idea creation right through to launching your podcast and the start of uh, growing your own super engaged community. And if you, like I say, Want to learn how to do it yourself then this gives you literally from start to finish the exact instructions on how to do that 
Um, obviously, the Facebook group has got great content, but it's not organized in uh, one chunk like this. And this comes with its own app as well. So you literally have it in your phone and you can listen to it in bite-sized chunks wherever you want, whenever you want, and basically on whatever device you want. So um, it's funny that I, I never wanted to do a course and a company that I was um, mentoring actually were launching a new education platform and they pushed me to do it. And it was an absolute ball ache at the time to fit into everything else that I was doing. But I'm so glad I did it because it's been great um, during lockdown, you know, and a lot of clients I was working with from the agency side of things paused their podcasts. So having an online offering like this has been great for me to engage with people. Um, and we have live webinars with, with the students every month where you can ask me absolutely anything you want about your podcast. Just had uh, another two students launch their podcasts this week as well, which I've been posting about on my social media. Um, so it's awesome to see, absolutely awesome to see people do that. Um, and just to finish up, I uh, just launched a mentoring program. So for those um, students who want to learn how to build a community to find out what's going on in my business. So this is my inner circle uh, where my um, mentees get to find out exactly what's working in my business and what's working in my clients' businesses and all of that knowledge and learnings that I've got. I share every month, twice a month with uh, training with me and then uh, also Q and A uh, with me every month as well. So those are the different ways. And then as an agency, uh, for those of you who've got brands, those are the services that we offer and we put it into a bunch of different packages or we do a bespoke service as well. So those of you wanting to go down that route, we literally take away all the things that you don't wanna do, such as the editing, the production, um, music, equipment, design, uh, and you get to spend half a day with me pre-launch on the strategy and half a day with me post-launch on your post-launch strategy as well. So again, if that's something of interest, then just get in touch with me. That's the easiest way to get hold of me, alex at screwitjustdoit.org. Those of you not already connected to me through these webinars, hook up with me on LinkedIn is the easiest. Uh, if you want to send me a WhatsApp message, that's my phone number. And then that's my website down the bottom as well, podpreneur.co.uk. Just take a screenshot of that maybe on your phone or on your laptop. Um, and if I can help you in any way, shape or form, I'd love to be able to do it. And I will stay on in now for another five minutes just to answer any questions. A reminder that um, I'm hosting Piers Linney. We're talking why um, diversity is good for business at 2 p.m. today. Hope you can all join us for that. Um, and again, if you found value in this today, uh, please share it. Get people to watch the replay because that will be available. Um, just send them the link. I'll be really appreciative, appreciative of that. Rish, thanks, Alex. You're very welcome. I hope you become the number one podcast for Nottingham Forest fans, Rish. And, and likewise, if you're going to be doing one for the business that you work with as well. Uh, so I will answer any questions that you got. Andy Rest, thank you as ever, Alex. Thank you, Andy. I will answer any questions that I didn't. Remind me, I'm going to scroll back up and have a little look as well, um, any that I missed. But if you post them up here, it might be quicker whilst I answer Diana's because that's the first one I can see here. So Diana says, you talked about going now to twice a week. Is there a minimum number of podcasts per month to keep the following? That's a really good question. So, yeah, that was a, uh, one of my students, Jonathan. He went to twice a week. Uh, so did Scott. He went to twice a week. Um, and I did. I took me a couple of years to do it. But, um, again, I wouldn't advise, ever advise launching with two a week because it's just too much to take on, I think, personally. But, yes, like anything, the more – the more you, you you put out there, you do get that um, you know cumulative effect, that momentum. Because for me, I, and I do get asked this, you know, what's the minimum number of podcasts I can get away with? To, and, and for me, people are saying, you know, can I do one a month? Can I do one every two weeks? And honestly, I don't think you can because I think you know podcasts are so popular at the moment, and we can see that in the stats that I've given you is that um, if someone listens to your podcast and there isn't another one coming soon if they've got to wait 
they're going to go somewhere else. If the average podcast listener listens to six podcasts a week, they're going to go somewhere else to find similar content because as much as you think yours is going to be unique, it, there will be something similar out there, uh, you know, niche-wise, genre-wise. So um, I think you need to be doing a weekly show. Um, a lot of the brands I work with want to create a series because they don't want the weekly commitment, and I think that's also fine to do a series. Um of podcasts so a series could be anywhere between four and 12 podcasts every season the sweet spot i think is some six seven eight for a series and you'd, you'd make that in advance release it promote it every week or every two weeks you could you could have a longer burn to promote each individual episode um so yeah i hope that answers your question uh, do you think Gen Z are into bite-sized bits from social post podcasts rather than show notes with links to follow up, etc. on the site, or is it all about the content in the podcast alone? Um, I, I think like anything, Diana, flip it back to who's your ideal listener. Try different ways to engage with them. Review what you've done, you know, that micro content that you put out there. Whatever has got the best engagement, uh, double down on that content and make more of it and make less of what they're not engaging with. So you'll find out if your audience, for example, are engaging with the bite-sized social media posts or are there, you know, is there no engagement whatsoever on that? Whereas when you look at your website and look at your, your show notes, how many people are landing on that page? How long are they staying on that page? How many of the links are they clicking, etc.? It's like anything in life. Measure it, test it, and measure it. Uh, Wendy, thanks. Really useful info, and we'll rewatch later. Thank you very much, Wendy. Diana, thanks, Alex. Really helpful answers. You're very welcome. Peter Henry, thanks to see you later. And you're going to be joining me in peers then. Awesome. Um, I think everything else I answered as we went, I think. Um, so a double check. Yeah, Rich, if you're still on, I, I would definitely say go to um, go and check the back end of the hosting platform that you are using. I think you've gone now. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it, guys. Yeah, look, I really enjoyed that. Thank you ever so much. I'm just going to go back um, on the slides just to show you if you'd like. To learn more, and just join the free Facebook group. Like I say, it's free. So all you're going to do is find more like-minded people, be held accountable by people in that group, and learn from people who are literally every week we've got people launching podcasts, and I'm doing lives again uh, from next week with successful podcasters who've launched their podcasts so we can learn from their launch. Uh, I think it's going to be super valuable. So... Thank you all very much indeed. Really appreciate all the questions. It's been great. Really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, hopefully get to hear and see from more of you soon when you release your own podcast. So thank you very much. Have a great rest of the day and come and join me and Piers in just under an hour.